Hey everybody, it's Norm from Tested, and today I'm gonna to be talking about a few different ways to film yourself or uh, use different cameras in your house while you're working from home, as many of you are, and as we are as well during this quarantine and lockdown period. And during this lockdown, uh, we've been doing obviously a lot of web calls, whether through Skype or Hangouts or Zoom, uh, as well as remotely uh, producing videos with podcasts and live streams and there are so many different ways um, for people out there uh, to capture themselves and to film themselves and not everyone has elaborate setups although it's been really fun to see uh, different news anchors and different entertainers and producers uh, set up their own home studios uh, people things that people who've been live streaming on Twitch or YouTube have been doing for a long time now um, so I'm gonna run you through a couple options that I've been testing, exploring, and uh, one that I've settled on that I just learned uh, this week. Uh, first of all, what you're watching me on right now is one of our office cameras. It's a Sony FS5. It's a fairly high-grade uh, prosumer camera, um, and it's pretty much uh, very much overkill. It's what we've taken to trips all around the world and what we filmed in the studio. And before we went into quarantine, I grabbed one of them to use at home to film here and it's being recorded not onto the camera but being recorded on this laptop I'm using uh, with OBS Studio. Um, this isn't going to be a video about OBS Studio because there's so many ways you can dive deep in that software but if I say it's a way for you to capture video and save it and mix uh, as well as stream and I'm capturing the video from this camera using a capture stick. It's from Elgato. It was one of my favorite things of last year. It's an Elgato Camlink 4K and basically it takes an HDMI signal from a camera like that, uh, full-size HDMI, plugs it into a USB 3 port and you can capture whether it's your game console, a live camera or anything with essentially uh, unprotected HDMI output along with audio as well. And it's pretty good, uh, but of course when you're capturing from this camera and then saving it on a system like OBS, you are losing a lot of the opportunities, a lot of the bit depth, a lot of that visual data that you could otherwise have manipulated or color corrected uh, or adjusted uh, if you're recording directly onto the camera itself, but a little more uh, versatile by going directly to a laptop. And then of course lets you do things like broadcast that as well or mix with other cameras. Uh, again, pretty much overkill, but uh, a capture card is something that's really useful whether you are using it for a video camera or capturing something from um, a video game console. Now, most people, if they're just using their MacBooks or laptops, those have built-in cameras as well. And I wanna give you a comparison if you go all the way back to the basics of what that looks like. And so this is the webcam camera. And, you know, relatively speaking, it's pretty garbage. I mean, this is because they have to pack these small sensors and lenses into the lid of a laptop. You don't have a lot of space there. And even though this room is, you know, not terribly lit, it's tungsten lights and it's, um, you know, it's, it's not broad daylight, it's still pretty grainy in this footage. And one of the only advantages you get from using a camera that's built into your computer is that it's basically gonna be the, the lowest latency camera and it would just work. You know, whether you're in Skype, Zoom, OBS, you can be able to select it uh, and it will just work. Uh, but this is insufficient for my needs. And so something I tested this past weekend and was able to get working is a camera using, uh, a webcam using uh, your iPhone, and it's an iOS camera app that I'm gonna switch to right now, uh, that's called OBS Camera. Uh, $16 application, really bare bones, but really powerful because for $16, you get to turn an iOS device like your iPhone, which has a really nice small camera, uh, into a live webcam. And I'm using it tethered right now, so there's a lightning cable plugged in to uh, the laptop, from the iPhone, although you can also do it over Wi-Fi with a little bit more uh, latency. And in the app, you can adjust uh, your uh, resolution and your frame rate up to 1080, uh, I believe 60 FPS, I'm recording at 30 right here, as well as the bit rate of the footage being transferred to uh, your computer system. Here I'm using 10 megabits, so it's really only about 
1.2, 1.3 megabytes per second, which of course a wired USB lightning cable is more than capable of handling. Um, you can switch between the lenses using this application. So you can use your 2X telephoto lens, 50 millimeter equivalent, uh, or your standard wide angle, which is what I'm using right now. Uh, but as of yet, there's no ability to use the ultra wide angle 14 millimeter lens, uh, which I think would be really cool for, for this type of uh, broadcast and, and webcam. Uh, one of the really nice things though about using an iOS camera, uh, iPhone camera, is that you can get really nice image quality relative to the web webcam, uh, built-in webcam, and also really good minimum focus distance. So you can show details on objects really close. The autofocus is super fast, and I can even see my fingernails there. Um, and uh, you can tap the screen, of course, uh, as you're setting up to lock in uh, focus, lock in exposure. But as I'm using this right now, uh, I can't see there's no um, viewfinder, uh, although you can swap to the front-facing camera, and that's a little bit lower quality. It's, I think, a huge improvement over a built-in webcam, uh, but there are limitations like the fact that uh, you can't uh, adjust the color temperature. So again, it's kind of maybe wildly changing. Uh, as I'm filming this, it's auto-adjusting based on its evaluation of the scene. Now, moving on to something that I was able to use this week and just released this week it was a firmware update, uh, actually a desktop utility uh, for Canon cameras. I'm gonna switch over to my next camera here. And this is a live feed out now from my DSLR. Now, live feeds out from DSLRs and mirrorless cameras is nothing new. Um, previously, you know, whether using a Sony camera or a Canon camera, you can live view in a couple different ways. Uh, the EOS app on Canon had previously allowed you to plug in USB and basically use a live view on a computer to do remote shutter. Uh, and there are plenty of Wi-Fi based apps on your phone or tablet or even desktop that allow you to basically have a remote view, adjust settings, and capture a picture. They're made not for this long-term video recording use, uh, but they're made for remote capturing. Uh, but, or you can also use HDMI, of course, uh, using a capture stick. Uh, but just released this week is this webcam utility from Canon, which allows you to plug in a USB 3 cable into, this, in this case, my Canon 5D. And uh, as long as I plug in and have enough power for the camera, and I'm using dedicated AC power for this camera, I'm having, I get to basically have a really, really nice full frame camera webcam. Uh, using my own uh, lenses. And the quality here is gonna depend on you know, your setup, your kit, so whether you have a PowerShot camera or even all the way up to an ESLR, mirrorless camera, uh, you can use that as your Zoom camera or your podcasting camera and you get in-camera bokeh without needing uh, computer vision like how Skype does it. Uh, you do have to configure all of your settings on the camera itself. So I'm filming in the movie mode right now. You also get the live view from the photo mode. So it's a little bit taller, uh, not 16 by nine, um, but things like color temperature, again, adjusting for tungsten here, your ISO, uh, all that stuff, your exposure compensation has to be done on the camera itself, uh, but you do still retain things like autofocus. So as I move something like this, Closer to the camera, it should be shifting. Yep, uh, maybe the minimum focus, there it goes. And you're limited to the minimum focus distance of the actual lens itself. Uh, but what's nice about this is if the camera's relatively close and you have a wide angle, I'm shooting a 24 millimeter here, uh, I can always reach out to the camera and press an autofocus or manual focus like that, or even change you know, the focal length and uh, zoom in. Let's get this back in focus, there it goes. Uh, this seems to be the easiest and uh, best solution if you have a Canon mirrorless or DSLR. And on the other manufacturer's side, uh, it's gonna be on them, whether it's Fuji, Panasonic, or Sony to release similar applications. This is also Windows only, it's in beta, and there are links below uh, for you to download and try it out yourself. But let's take a look at all four cameras um, going down from the webcam to the iPhone, to a DSLR, to a prosumer uh, professional camera. Again, lots of different ways to 
capture your video. I don't even know which camera to look at right now. And what's really powerful is that all of this is being ingested into OBS Studio, which is what allowed me to record directly, do those transitions. I can even live stream with it, as, as well as if you download a uh, OBS Virtual Camera plugin, uh, which I'll include a link below to as well, will allow what you see here, this window, uh, to be itself a virtual camera, uh, which you can then import into Skype, into Zoom, into any other application. Uh, and so there you have, again, lots of power, and uh, I'll give you, give you a little bit of test of latency. I think the lowest latency, if you watch right here, is gonna be the webcam, and the highest latency, unfortunately, is the DSLR, the camera application, but lots of options. I'd love to know what setups you're using at home to film yourself, whether you're podcasting, live streaming, or just uh, doing virtual meetings. Uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Details and links to the things I mentioned are below, and stay tuned to more behind the scenes videos in the future as we all get through this working at home. See ya.